Hey, it's Dave here with AlexFergus.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at Cinder. It's a new electric grill. It's a smart grill that can cook your food slowly, similar to a sous vide, but without the hassle of having to put your food into a bag and then submerge it into a water bath. So the Cinder um, supposedly can cook your food to the exact temperature to within one degree. And yep, this is just a quick sample of the new style of camera app and everything. All right, so I've got myself a nice cut of meat here, some, some uh, organic grass-fed beef, and I'm gonna be putting a, a dry rub on it right here. Uh, it's just a little bit of salt, pepper, some uh, onion and garlic powder, and we're gonna let that rest for about 30 minutes before we put it onto the cinder over there. And what's gonna happen is cinder is going to gently bring up the temperature to the desired doneness, the, te the internal temperature of the steak that I want it to be at, um, whether it's rare, medium rare, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm gonna let the uh, spice rub uh, sit on the steak for about 30 minutes or so to kind of absorb some of the moisture out of the steak and tenderize the meat. And then I'm gonna put it on the cinder and I think it should probably take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half for the internal temperature of the steak to be brought up to the desired doneness level. And then from there, we'll take the steak off cinder, turn it to sear mode, and we will at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and then sear the steak for 45 seconds, possibly a little longer, and it should be done. One thing, uh, I also made a side of potatoes to go with the, uh, the steak as well. This is uh, a Parmesan and truff white truffle, thinly sliced potatoes, so it's a uh, Parmesan cheese, um, some some rosemary and some truffle, white truffle oil in there. I just realized that uh, before I get started uh, cooking on this guy, I might want to give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough and open up and show you. So on the front here, you've got a drip tray uh, for all of the juices and stuff that drain off during the cooking and searing process. There's a control knob here that you can adjust your temperature. And obviously it's the lid. Um, it is hinged, kind of like a George Foreman. So let's go ahead and open it up. There we go. And right here is the cooking platform. And these um, cooking surfaces are ceramic, uh, non-stick, so they're not um, Teflon or any kind of chemical that might be harmful um, at high heat. Um, so they're not really truly non-stick because they're, they're not a non-stick coating. They're more of a ceramic, like you'd find on a ceramic cast iron skillet or a Dutch oven. Um, they do pop out. You can push this button here and pop it up so that you can take them off and clean them. They do not go in the dishwasher though, so they have to be cleaned by hand. And you'll see on the top lid, there's another plate in here and there's a release latch right there for this top plate right here. So it is a little bit tall and what can happen is, well, what happens is there's a channel here for the juices to go down here, but um, there's also a channel all the way around to just prevent any accidental leakage from the food that you're cooking. So like I said, you'll put the food in here on the surface, close the lid like so, and then this will heat your food up until the optimal temperature that you want it to be before you sear the outside of your your meat, your, your food, whether that's chicken, beef, fish. Um, I did some ahi tuna last night. I seared it. I didn't actually use the cooking to bring it up to temperature because with the ahi, all I needed to do was just sear the outside. And the 45 second sear actually worked perfectly. So that's a good, um, that's good, that's great. Uh, Cause ahi tuna, if you uh, overcook it, um, it'll just fall apart. Um, it's really hard to get the perfect sear on ahi tuna. The thing is very, very solidly built. Um, like I said, uh, it, I think it weighs about 30 pounds actually. Heavy stainless steel. Um, when we turn it on, um, let's see, push the button there and let's get cooking. And you can, like I said, you can turn the dial You can hear the fan come on. It'll give you current temperature and then you can set, you can go all the way up to sear. So we've got the steak. It's been rested now. We're going to go ahead and I am going to open up the cinder and I'm going to use my 
my phone here and I'm going to use the app to tell it that I want a medium rare. Um, I'm just going to use the generic um, cut there and it's telling me that the lid must be closed before we start cooking. So let's go ahead and put the steak on right here. I'm going to use some, I'm going to go ahead and just put the steak on just like that. We're going to go ahead and close the lid and we're going to click start cooking. And there it goes. And it even gives me an estimated time there on the app. It says about 44 minutes, which is fine. Uh, I figured it'd be about an hour. And then we'll uh, come back and we'll do the searing once this is done cooking. All right. It is remote control, which means that it's going to send my phone um, an update uh, when it is done cooking. So while it's cooking, it's going to be doing this little pulsy blue thing here. Yep, there we go. So Cinder is now cooking away on my steak. Hooray! My app has told me now that the <clears throat> steak is done. So I'm going to go ahead and open the lid and remove it. Um, we did a medium rare on this, so it should be 133 degrees all the way through. So let's open the lid and take a look. And it's not going to look too appetizing because it hasn't been seared yet. But yep, yeah, that looks about what a sous vide um, steak on a, in a sous vide bag would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off, set that over here, and I'm going to wipe the plates down. Just kind of clean those off. And because it, it's only 133 degrees, it's not too terribly hot, so you're not going to burn yourself. Um, and get the top lid here. And I am going to then close the lid now and turn it all the way up to sear and uh, it's, it says it's heating to 450 degrees. Okay so while we're waiting for the cinder to get to 450 degrees I'm going to take some ghee, just clarified butter, and some grass-fed clarified butter and brush it lightly onto the, onto the uh, steak here just to get it so we've got a little bit of oil on the steak when it's uh, searing so we're just going to cover the each side i'm going to flip it over and uh, do the same on the other side as well let me see here let's flip this guy over and just actually just gonna dump it on there like that and then i can spread it around and uh yeah this should be almost good to go here just gonna wait uh, we're already up to almost 300 degrees there on the cinder so just a few more seconds and we should be good to go Okay, cinder now is turned red and it says press to sear. So I'm gonna take the steak, I'm gonna open the lid and plop it on, and here we go. Now we got the sear timer going on there. Minimal amount of smoke, actually, so that's that's good. Okay, we're going into long sear mode now. I think we're going to let that go for just a couple more seconds. And I think maybe 25 seconds should do it. All right, let's take a look now. That looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and pull that off the, off the grill. Okay, so I just took it off the uh, the grill here, and I went ahead and cut into it. Let's take a look here. As you can see, it's a pretty nice pink. It's got a pretty nice sear on it. So let's go ahead and plate that guy up and uh, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm.